Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and hopefully the rain outside is not too loud. I just got done putting the old big turbo back on. Uh, on top of it, I also dropped out like seven foot worth of intercooler piping and the old piece of crap intercooler that was on here. We're running enough methanol injection now that we can get away with basically using chemical uh, intercooling with just using, utilizing the methanol injection. So that being said, we've also gotten rid of the supercharger. I, this video will probably come out with before that video, but there will be a video here in the next couple days where I go through all the stuff that I've done. As I said, we're running the big turbo uh, and it doesn't seem to be leaking. I've already done a start on it. It's, it's you know, I had some condensation because the truck's been sitting, but no smoke. Uh, no oil so far. Unfortunately, it's raining, so I can't really get it out. But as a part of this process, we are deleting the MAF sensor. And uh, so I wanted to kind of go over how you do it, specifically on the Gen 5s. It's a little bit different on the Gen 3s. And the Gen 4s, uh, a lot of them will follow kind of the same uh, setup as the Gen 5s. Uh, and why do we do a MAF delete? Well, it's because, for one, you've got to have a long straight section of intake pipe somewhere to promote laminar flow, which is uh, straight flow that doesn't have any turbulence. If you get turbulence across this thing, it causes it to read uh, all, kind of, all kinds of wrong, and so you will actually have issues dialing in the fuel curve on your map if you don't have a perfectly straight section. And generally, it's got to be, I don't remember what they said, two and a half to three times the diameter of your, your tubing. You've got to think of it like water flow. So now with our setup down here, we don't really have a straight enough section without having to go way down underneath the truck. We don't want to install this thing underneath the truck. Uh, another thing is, is once you get into boost and, and uh, get into higher boost levels, say 14, 15 PSI and beyond, this thing just becomes more of a, a, hand, you know, a hindrance than it does anything that you actually use. So it's really good for down low, like uh, idle and highway driving and stuff like that. But especially on the later generations, you can get your speed density tune or your VE tune dialed in and it'll work perfect. The only places you might have issues is whenever you have big elevation changes. But even then it's not as bad because we're using pressure ratio, which is barometric pressure and uh, divided by uh, whatever your map pressure is, as opposed to strictly map like the old Gen 3 uh, volumetric efficiency tables. Now, unlike the old Gen 3s though, whenever you do a map delete, you can't just do away with this thing. So there's a couple reasons behind that. One of them is uh, you have to have breakout sensors. Beforehand, in fact, right now, I still have my barometric sensor broken out. This harness right here is if you are running boost, but you are still running uh, your uh, factory map sensor, because this is built in and if you don't break this out, it will see boost and it will make your atmospheric shoot up. Whereas normally this is always kind of reading your atmospheric in your intake track. So you have to break that out. But we're gonna be able to go ahead and do away with that now because what we have to do is we're still gonna use this sensor. But we have one more breakout that we have to run and that's the IAT sensor because the intake air temperature is built into this also. There's actually two uh, intake air temperature sensors in here, but the one that is used to calculate all of your intake air for your fueling and stuff is, is they make a breakout harness and I will put a link down to that. In fact, I'll put a link down to your barometric one in case you're boosted and you are still running uh, your factory map sensor. You do need one of these. It makes it so much easier to dial in your pressure ratios. So because of that, we're going to hook this thing back up because there's two or three other sensors that are involved on this that we have to have, such as the humidity sensor. And uh, as I said, there's a secondary uh, air pressure sensor on this. And so basically what we're going to do now is we're just going to zip tie this thing out of the way. This will probably end up ruining the actual math element in this, but that part of it we already have disabled. We will go in, see what that check engine light looks like, and we will disable that in the tune so that is no longer an issue. But be aware that if you're thinking about doing this temporarily, you might kill your MAP sensor by not having this thing hooked up uh, or having this thing in a clean intake track. If this thing's just out in the open as dust, grime, and crap like that uh, accumulate on it, there's a good chance that we will kill it eventually. But I'm going to go ahead, as I said, I've got my IAT breakout sensor already hooked up. We're good there. I'm going to kind of zip tie all this together to clean it up a little bit so it's not flopping around. And it's not the most elegant solution, but it works for now. And honestly, there might be some guys that have figured out ways of breaking all the rest of this stuff out. I'll have to do some more research. But I know for right now, this is the most simple way of doing away with math 
but still keeping those additional sensors that you want off of the MAF sensor. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's jump in the truck, fire this thing up, clear the DTCs that are on there, see what comes back, and then we will disable those DTCs from this setup. So stick around. Okay, in the next section, I completely forgot to tell you what you need to do to actually disable the MAF because I had already set mine up for speed density and had already done this. But you need to go in. I'm going to throw a screenshot up here. By the way, you'll, you'll be seeing what I'm talking about. You go into engine diagnostics and airflow. And underneath there, there's the mass airflow sensor section where we have a frequency fail high and a frequency fail low. Let's set both of those to zero hertz, save it, flash it into the engine along with the DTCs that we talk about here in a bit. So as I said, my bad. I forgot all about that. Uh, I feel like an idiot, but uh, you know, Thank goodness I remembered it before I published this. Thanks, guys. Okay, I apologize if it's too dark to see me. If so, I will just full screen uh, my uh, tuning laptop here so you can see what we're doing. I've already connected up here. We're going to have quite a few DTCs on here from whenever I had the sensor completely unhooked and was running the vehicle to do a leak check earlier. So let's go ahead and clear those out. And not all of them will go away. We should be able to read back in here. And... The permanent ones, I'm not worried about. Those will clear themselves eventually. Here we go. Now we just got a new one. There's the one that we're looking for. This current one that's P0103 is the one that we have disabled in the tune for the math. So we don't need to upgrade that. So P0103, we're going to come back over to our tune file. So we will come into our engine diagnostics. We're going to go over to our DTCs, go down to P0103. So many codes on these newer cars. There it is. So P0103, no mill light. We're going to put no error reported. I'm not even sure why that had a mill had a no mill light. It was popping up the service vehicle soon. I must have messed that up or fat fingered it last time I tried to disable it. I'm going to go ahead and do the same for 102 and 101 because they are math only. We'll change those to no error reported, but we'll leave these other ones like the humidity sensor and stuff. Those are related to the MAP sensor, but those are ones that we'll necessarily want to know if it fails uh, because we do utilize those for different things. That's why we had to leave that sensor hooked up. So we can go ahead and save this one. We're going to save this as MAP delete. And let's go ahead and write this one in. Hmm. Thunder and the lightning. Okay. Let's connect back up here. Read our DTCs. And the 103 is gone. The 102 is still there. That will probably clear now that we've done it. Yeah, the permanent will go away. It's just a matter of time. Those usually have some cycles related to them. So if you, you know, start and stop this thing a few times, do a, a drive cycle, and those permanent ones are still there, hit up the comments down below. Let me know which ones they are, and I'll tell you what you need to do to get rid of them specifically. But they will go away on their own eventually. And that's basically it. That's all it is to doing a math delete. Now we are mathless on this. All of our tuning is going to be speed density from this point on. And so uh, just be aware, as I said, of, of the fact that speed density is a little bit more altitude determined or a little bit more altitude, uh, you know, based. And it's, so if you do have some shifting altitudes to deal with, you might want to keep an eye on your wide band as you go through those to make sure that you don't need to do a couple logs. Honestly, it shouldn't be that far off. And a lot of those you will hit just by getting into boost and stuff like that and different load things. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, 
we'll see if I stick with it this way or if I end up going back over to math. Uh, you know, I've got a little more tuning to do, but I'm going to go through and blast out my speed density, my VE maps, my VE, VVE maps. I'm going to wipe those out, start from scratch, show you guys kind of how you do a VVE map from scratch for setting up on boosted and like what you have to go through whenever you're adding a two bar or a three bar sensor. So if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button down below, uh, throw a thumbs up. I want to thank everybody for for breaking 2,000 subscribers. You guys are the best subscribers out there. Uh, let me know what you guys want to see in the comments. We've got more uh, Super Auto, aka Smoke Monster videos coming out this week. Uh, I've got a video on installing a uh, auxiliary fuse block underneath the hood to tie in some of these other things that I've hooked up recently. And then we'll probably jump into um, Oh, oh, some more torque management videos and stuff like that. So, as I said, uh, thanks for all the support out there. Hit up the Patreon if you haven't, and make sure you subscribe. You don't want to miss out on what's coming up. And thanks for stopping by the garage.